Okay. So we're filming in a weird spot. We don't normally film at. What's uh? What's well, we're downstairs. Downstairs, everyone. yeah. Yeah. This is uh, Calvin Jones Park Tool Company. Ben Oliver Park Tool Company. Again, downstairs in our secret studio Dungeon lab. to do a special wheel build and. Springtime came early and it caught me off guard. I wasn't ready. I thought I had weeks and weeks to do this because my nice fat bike here, I like to ride these things, but ow, they, there's a problem in the summer. These things are heavy now. Yeah. You can't even hear yourself. They're so yeah, loud. loud. What I need is some new wheels, Ben. Okay. So Something fat. What's the opposite of, of winter is summer. What's the opposite of fat? Skinny. I you believe. got something skinny for me? I got, uh, I got this. This is pretty skinny. skinny this is what gets. we're going with. This All is right. going to be beautiful. How's it going to look here? Well, no hubs or spokes yet, but uh, it's going to look, uh, going to look it's ridiculous. Going to look, but... It's going to look awesome. <laughs> it's going to look so good. this is a special <laughs> uh, build, and no, we don't know how it's going to come out. So we're, no. we're going to let you in on our, on our build, and we're going to. We're going to see how it goes yeah, and maybe some mistakes. Take and, it uh, piece by piece. Yeah, and see, yeah. See how so it shapes up. Yeah. We'll take up. So, but the first step is to figure out the spoke lengths because we yeah. got rims, we've got tires, we've got hubs, and we got no spokes. So this is the rim. This is a uh, uh, it's an old Wolber um, Profil Vent. Is that right? Am I pronouncing that right? Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Uh, 20. Well, yeah, 20, 20 for our, our English speaking, uh, American speaking friends. Yep. But what's kind of fun here, I'm, I'm missing something here. You got, I'm missing, you got holes there, Ben? I got, I got one. One, that's for one. the valve. Yeah. Not a single spoke hole. So what happens? These are from the, uh, the mid 80s. This is a, an early mid 80s rim. That was an interesting period in racing. They were trying to figure out spokes and how many spokes you needed. So uh, rather than um, uh, national teams buy them pre-drilled, we used to get them on the US team blank, and then holes would be drilled as you needed them. 18, 20, 24, we didn't know what we wanted. Right. So let's figure out some spoke lengths. Okay, let's right. figure that out. Just let that baby run, you think? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're doing some spoke calculations here. Let's try it. We have to figure out the, the length of the spoke. So let's start first with our hub. We have a, a hub here, if we can, we can see this. We're worried about the flanges, the width of them, and then from the center, that's going to be a, a, a concern. Okay. Uh, spoke length is, is kind of fun. It's kind of mysterious to a lot of people. It ain't nothing but math, right, is it? Right. Yeah. Trigonometry. So we'll pretend here that I've got, I've got them, you're, you're, you're the rim, you grabbed at the top there, so he's the rim. This is straight up zero cross or radial. Mm -hmm. But if he goes back a bit, it gets more and more of an angle, that's our cross pattern. Four cross is almost straight out, but we're gonna go for a, a three cross. So you can see if he comes back up to radial, that's our shortest distance, but as you do more and more crosses, goes across at a tangent, we're gonna need a longer and longer spoke. spoke. Yeah. Well, luckily, we have computers yes. and number crunchers uh, to, to do that, uh, but it, it can be done by hand as, as, as well. Yeah. But how big is this flange? The fatter and wider, bigger the flange is, the shorter the spoke. Mm -hmm. So we need to know the distance there. So we're going to go straight across here, and we're going to get, well, on these, hole to hole, center up on each, 60. We're gonna call this flange 60 millimeters on the, on the flange, All okay? Right. We're gonna try and be fairly accurate as we go because we don't want what's called tolerance stacking. Yeah. So uh, the next thing we wanna know is from the flange to the center. Flange so, to the center. Center of the uh, overlock nut, right? So the that's in correct. between here. That's, that's correct. Okay. That's, again, we've talked about another technical uh, uh, videos here. We don't care about the center of these two flanges. Yep. It's the center of where it sits in the bike. We yep. want the rim to be in the middle of the bike. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have pre-installed a zip tie here to, to see one side and the other. How would you do it in real life? This is a 197. You divide it by two, you know the, the exact middle of the hub. We can measure from this 
end to this flange and deduct it from that number, uh, then, we, then we can get, uh, get, our, get our numbers. Luckily for us, we cheated. <laughs> we, we, did. We, we cheated. We've got some numbers. So on the, our rear hub, the left side we're saying 56 and a half here. So our left lock nut face into the center. Well, the, 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 the flange to the center. Oh, your flange center. The flange okay. to the okay. center is 56 okay. and a half. Yeah. And then on the, uh, the tether side, as we, we like to say, 46. So 46 here, 56 and a half there. That's going to be uh, uh, the, uh, the rear. The front, the same concept. Grab us that, that front there. Uh, it's the same, same concept. You can see the zip tie here. It's between the frame, but because we have a rotor, this is shoved in, this is not the same. So we would have to count for the same. We'd have to measure, measure that flange. So these, are gonna get, uh, these numbers are going to get calc uh, entered in our, into our uh, uh, spoke calculator. Spoke spoke calculator. Yeah, yeah. Several different websites have them. That's the easy part. This is good. Now, the tricky part is going to be the rim. Right. Let's have a look at that rim next. Okay. So on a rim, uh, what's kind of fun uh, is to measure it yourself. That's just always good, good to do that. Mm -hmm. Modern rims, you typically can find what the manufacturer calls the effective rim diameter, right? Uh, this thing is, boy, early 80s, maybe not so current. Right, hard to so, find on the uh, uh, Hard, the hard to find. Uh, and even, even if you have it, it's still good to know where this comes from and to get your own numbers, although this is going to be a bit weird uh, measuring, as, as you'll, you'll see. So effective rim diameter, it's not the diameter of the rim. It's not even the diameter of the tire, OK, for your clincher people, uh, 622 millimeters. Um, yeah. That's not the effective rim diameter. What we're looking for is the theoretical end of that spoke. Where would you want it to be? Not up. Yeah, not quite that high. Not quite that high. <laughs> Let's get closer here. So what we're saying, we're saying that the spoke uh, end should be well, not to the inside. It's going to go through the rim, up through the nipple. So it's actually sitting right in here somewhere. So to get this, we're going to have to measure the outside for us, deduct the height. We're going to have to find the thickness of the rim and add in, add in a washer, and add in uh, the height of the nipple head. So let's, let's start with some math here. And a tape measure, the RR12 in metric, and inches. Let's go metric today. OK. Although it's good to be bilingual. True, true. <laughs> It'll get you much further in the so, world, yeah. Uh, so we're doing uh, the outside diameter here. Outside. And that we came up with about say six thirty two. Six thirty two. So you can see where where he's measuring there, right? Oh, One yeah. more time, yeah, well, six thirty. Just kind of swiping the bottom. Yeah, and notice he's going for the biggest number he can get, yeah. right? Because if it's off crooked, it's gonna be smaller. Sure. Six thirty two. Outside. Six 32. Then we're going to take our caliper here, make sure it's zeroed. We want the height of that rim. How tall, thank you there. How tall is, is, uh, is this rim? We're going to get the inside edge is what we're looking for. 20 millimeters. 20 millimeters on both sides. So from six 32, we're going to deduct how much? 40. 40. He got 40 by adding 20 and 20. A computer. A computer <laughs> right here. Right, right up here. here. <laughs> OK. So we're, we deduct that. I'll let you uh, people at home uh, do that. But now we need the thickness of the rim. So where's our single hole? Now, you can see a little edge, a little uh, thickness in here. We don't want that, do we? It's thicker down here. Now we need a piece of steel. It's just as a stud. 
We'll use a little hex wrench. I'm going to hold that here. You don't have your uh, stare at depth gauges no, or anything? No, no stare. <laughs> so, I'm just going to bump. This is going to come up in the hole. It's going to bump. I'm at the bottom of uh, the rim here, so I'm going to bump that. This is going to help me get a good idea. We're going to go 2.98. 2.98. Hey, between friends, we're friends. Let's call it three. Let's call it three. Let's make life easy here. So it's three millimeters here. It's three here. Six. 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 So uh, we have to, we deducted the 40. But now we're adding six because the nipples, the spoke's going to come up into it. We also have uh, a little more fun here. What is the washer? You uh, let's let's talk about that because not uh, not used uh, frequently. This, correct. These days. Correct. So let's talk about the this. This is commonly uh, in uh, built in. Built mm -hmm. in. You know, let's show the people a washer here. These. Basically buffer the the nipple against the rim uh, so that these don't bind and they can move a little. Uh, adds a little surface area contact and uh, makes things nice for, uh, for it the does. wheel belt. So. Acts as a thrust washer. And a nice modern, nice modern here. We got uh, your WTB built in. The, the the grommets they're called are built in. So effectively, it's it's a, it's a cheap grommet. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, uh, it's going to distribute the load and act, act as a thrust washer. Yep. And it's also going to be a pain in the neck to build with. <laughs> Each one is inserted. Yeah, it's individual. Right. Uh, yeah, that'll be So great. the spoke has to come up through the rim, right? Through this. And this is, what do we get here? 0. 0.49. 0. 0.49. Caller 0.5, I think. Let's we're, just, I, I think we're, we're getting pretty lucky with these even numbers. Yeah, Calvin, yeah. I'm gonna say so, for a math. So 0.5 on one side, 0.5 on the other side. Yep. One. No. We've we've added in six. We've added in one. And now, if you you have a look here, it goes past the nipple. How far? That's the question. But we don't want the spoke to go all the way through. Too long. We actually just want to go to the bottom of that slot in a perfect world. Yep, yep. Doesn't always happen. Do, but do we have to have that? We can get away with nah. it. But we're gonna. Without. When we're done, we're gonna ride the bike. Yeah. So here, I'm gonna measure just the head down into the slot. Oh. Cheaters. A mechanics tip. <laughs> hey, now it's easy. There we are. That much more. Ugh, 2.5. Okay. 2.5. Again and again is five. Five. These nice numbers. Okay. So uh, we have uh, uh, 592 mm -hmm. plus six. 598. Plus one. 597. Plus five. 602. We're gonna go with 602. That's our ERD, our effective rim diameter. ERD. Let's go see what the World Wide Web has to show us. Probably a lot. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is a good lesson uh, in life, of course. Going back through the math, uh, we see we have a bath there, Ben. We did. We uh, subtracted instead of adding, I think. We, uh, 598 plus 1, 597. We should have had 604, if you go back through our, our numbers there. So actually entering good data is important, turns out. Yeah. Turns yeah. out, OK. So now uh, we have a spoke uh, length calculator here. We're going to. Uh, enter a bunch of numbers. So that's our effective rim diameter. Now we want our, our flange, and uh, I actually have these written down here, save some time, but our flange diameter is 60 millimeters. Uh, we want this flange to center measurement. We're gonna get two different uh, sides of two different spoke lengths here. So uh, the short side, 
The short side is a 46 millimeter, that's the drive side. And this is just standard stuff, that's the hole size. 32 hole, that's real important. Three cross, we're gonna stick with that. We're gonna hit calculate and now the magic happens. 294.2. How big is point two, Ben? Is that, do you think I got point two, is that about? Yeah, that looks like, that looks pretty, pretty what, accurate. Yeah, yeah. What should we call it, dude? let's just call it 294. All right. between, between friends, that's, that's good enough. So that's our drive side spoke that's coming up out of here. Now we need our non-drive. We were at um, 56 and a half millimeter. Everything stays the same, but our flange here, 56.5 uh, and 296. On the button. On the button. Yeah. And that's just luck. So uh, we want to try and keep it accurate. Uh, we don't want any stacking tolerances, so uh, we're going to have differential spoking to uh, 96 coming up from here and 294 from here, and we'll, we'll call it good. Okay. So before we go, we've got to talk about the difficult part, about the exciting part that's coming up yeah, yeah. next week, two weeks, who knows? Yeah. Have a look at this rim. These hubs are really wide, and they make the rims really wide. And notice the spacing here is really wide. Mm -hmm. This doesn't go at much of an angle. As a matter of fact, when they do the spoke length here, you have to account for this distance in here. Yeah. But is that going to be like is that going to be like the skinny? Yeah, I would say that's that's almost double the width of this rim, Calvin. So yeah. uh, we're probably going to have to somehow account for that trajectory. Uh, trajectory is the the right term. Normally, in a race hub, this spoke. Whoops. Yep. Any spoke is going to be coming at a slight angle there, but this baby is going to be over like this, really braced. Well, not so bad on the spoke, but how does that spoke leave the rim? At a funny angle. Yeah. If we drill this baby straight down, straight down, straight down, we have a lot this of is going to bend right at the end. Yeah. What do we have at the end of a spoke? Threads. Bent threads equal? <laughs> no, no threading. <laughs> no, no bending. Broken, yep. broken spokes. It's going to be broken. Yep. So we're going to have to drill off at an angle. That's going to be the fun part. Yeah, so that's our challenge. That's right. This. Yeah, it should be fun. Stay tuned. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Ben, what do we have to put in this rim? Holes. Holes. Yeah. What's there we go, oh. that popped right through. I've got a, a machinist square mm -hmm. and my machinist's eye. What the furniture shim does is actually kicks this back. 